welcome to my first ever Q&A. My name is Ida and today I will provide you with the ace to your cues. I got a lot of good questions both here and on Instagram and I tried to kind of bulk them together so that it made sense. Um, so I'm just going to go straight into it and begin with the answers. I am a Pisces and uh, my birthday is the 19th of February. That date is actually Pisces some years and then an Aquarius some years, but the year that I was born, which is 91, uh, it's a Pisces year and I feel like that's really fitting for me. I'm not like super invested in horoscopes and stuff, but uh, every time I read a description of a Pisces, I feel like I am the quintessential Pisces girl. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm born in 91, so I am 28. So I am actually a grown up. Uh, I don't always act my age, but I do have a mortgage, so I know how to add it. This is a very important question, which is why I'm placing it right at the beginning. My um, official favorite band is Nirvana. That was my favorite band when I was 13 to 16, and that's kind of the vital years of having a favorite band. I don't really listen to Nirvana that much anymore. I think my maybe current present tense favorite band is Wolf Alice. Um, but I will give you my top 10 list. I always have my top 10 list ready in case somebody asks me at a party or something. Um, they never ask me that, they always just ask me what I do. But uh, my favorite bands are Nirvana, Hole, Placebo, Pixies, Smashing Pumpkins, Garbage, Wolf Alice and the 1975 and uh, Mitski, even though she's not a band and um, Tori Amos, even though she's not a band either. But she has inspired me a lot, both in terms of songwriting and uh, my choice of hair color, I guess. To be fair, I never ask people at parties for their top 10 list either. I also just ask, what do you do? And uh, speaking of... What do you pursue professionally? I like that, it has a nice kind of flair to it. I'm a student still. I have a bachelor's degree in Nordic literature and languages and I also have a master's degree in practical literature. That's not what it's called in Norwegian, but it's kind of hard to translate. Right now I'm doing like a practical teaching unit on top of that with the Norwegian and English as the teaching subjects. And I'm also taking some extra classes in musicology as well. So I am actually studying more than full time at the moment, about full time and a third, but uh, it's going quite well, I think. I've gotten into some kind of rhythm with it, so I'm not that stressed out, just a little. I have one year left on the teaching thing now, and then I will be able to teach Norwegian, English and music for years 5 to 13. But I am seriously considering doing a second bachelor's degree in musicology, because I figured that with what I have from before, I think I can manage to do it in a year and then I would have two bachelor's degrees and one master's degree and uh, I think it would make me really versatile in terms of work and I would also be able to prove to the world that I am a real overachiever. I guess what I pursue professionally or what I kind of <laughs> want to be when I grow up includes a lot of slashes. I want to be like a middle school teacher slash author slash content creator slash internet musician slash somebody who works in literature and cultural events kind of i think i will start as a full-time teacher and then if i make enough money from writing or other like freelance work i will go on to teaching part-time and then have some other projects on the side but i do want to be a teacher i really enjoy that role and I have been working as a teacher part-time for six years actually while I have been studying and it is the best job really. <laughs> I just really enjoy walking around in the halls with like my mug and my stack of books and papers and having students come up to me and ask me questions and it's like I'm a person in their life and uh, I think it's a real privilege and uh, I also really enjoy teaching. And I really like being around teenagers. I think if I were only to hang out with adults all day, I would wither and die. After the summer, I'm actually going to teach music in the years six and seven. So that will be great, I think. They have ukuleles, so I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I want to write books, that's kind of my thing. And I also want to make music, of course, but I don't really see any of these things excluding the other things, you know? 
that is a very good question. Um, music has always been a part of my life. I think it's been my passion forever. Um, when I was a kid, I just wanted to be a pop star, specifically Ginger Spice. I figured that there would always have to be Spice Girls, and once the current Spice Girls were too old, <laughs> they would have to take in some new girls, and that would be me. So I started writing songs when I was eight, and I was always trying to like form girl groups with my friends, and I would always sing at like the school shows and stuff. But I was never like the best singer. I was uh, I wasn't bad, but I didn't have much of a stage presence, and I think I was like. A big introvert and stuff and it's kind of hard when you base your whole identity on something and then you're just kind of average at it i guess what made me take interest in music is something that i was born with and then what made me want to kind of express myself through music or what made me find my voice was in fact writing finding that i had another passion just really helped me fuel my passion for music. So that's why I don't agree with the whole don't have a plan B thing. I think you should have all the plans, all of the passions in the alphabet if you want to. I think having more legs or more pillars to your passions will just make each of them stronger. And um, I realized that storytelling was kind of the umbrella passion <laughs> that helped everything that I like to do. And I think that through writing I have become a better singer or a better performer. Maybe not like vocal techniques or anything, but in terms of stage presence that has definitely improved. So I don't really think of my identity as like a singer anymore, more of sort of a storyteller. And um, even though I will never be the best singer in the world, I can be the best at what I do because nobody else is doing exactly that. Yeah, thank you for coming to my TED talk. So as I said, I started writing songs when I was eight and uh, the first one was called Vär här. That means be here or being here. And um, the refrain went like this. Jag vill vara här, jag vill vara där, jag vill vara hos dig, du vill vara hos mig. Du vill vara här, du vill vara där, du vill vara hos mig, jag vill vara hos dig. And I'm um, translated into English, it goes like this. I want to be here, I want to be there, I want to be with you, you want to be with me. You want to be here, you want to be there, you want to be with me, I want to be with you. Yeah. As for songwriting tips, I do have a whole video about that, so I will link it up here. I am actually really happy with it. I spent a lot of time on it and not that many people watched it. I think it perhaps might be too long for YouTube to recommend it to people, but I go through like everything from inspiration to the more technical stuff. And then I write a song on camera and perform it. So I don't really think 18 minutes is that long when you think about it. So yeah, go watch it. I took piano lessons uh, from when I was 12 to when I was 15 and then I switched to singing lessons and uh, when I was 16 I started high school and I went to like the music program of high school so I had singing lessons there and also some piano and guitar lessons and uh, I also had you know classes in musical theory and history and stuff and then uh, after that I went to study jazz vocals for a year I didn't study any more music performance after that but I did get into the Oslo Philharmonic Choir and I've been there for seven years now so I do get some voice training in that way and also some practice in reading sheet music and stuff and we do also have this like program with individual vocal coaching every semester or so, but uh, I am self-taught at the ukulele. The first song I learned was uh, Amanda Palmer's ukulele anthem, and that was actually the first song that I uploaded to this channel almost two years ago, so that's how long I have been playing the ukulele. I guess I improved my playing by practicing consistently. <laughs> I know that's boring advice, but it's the truth. I think it helped having this channel. I don't know if I would have been that consistent with practicing if I didn't have a goal to record and upload something every week. So I do recommend starting a YouTube channel. Just do it. 
and uh, singing whilst playing is really hard in the beginning but I guess the best advice here as well is just practicing and uh, practice singing the songs like out loud when you're playing not just think the words in your head because it is a muscular thing and uh, the practice will help in the end yes uh, record yourself when you are singing and you can listen to it and find like what works what sounds good what doesn't sound that good and then try to improve that and record yourself singing the same song over and over again you can even show your friends if you have kind friends and ask them to tell you what works and what doesn't and then try to like improve from that uh, you can also uh, try to maybe film yourself or uh, sing in the mirror because your posture and your breathing is a big part of it so just knowing that you're kind of rooted in the floor and that you stand up straight and you have your shoulders back and you have like your free flow of air in a way i have noticed that when i try to hit the high notes i will like push my chin up because i think that that helps and uh, it doesn't because i will like strain my whole flow of air so i noticed that when i see myself sing on camera and uh, it has helped actually to like see these little details that you maybe won't recognize when you're just standing there singing yourself as for uh, breast support i guess i would say that cardio is my best tip being in like good physical shape will help you breathe and sing at the same time and also the other tips that i have mentioned like posture and trying to film or record yourself to see when you struggle and when you're doing fine writing is of course a big hobby of mine and i also really like watercolor painting like making little sketches and stuff and uh, i guess clothes and style is a hobby um, i really like being creative with my style but I try to be a conscious consumer, so most of my things are thrifted and a lot of it is like upcycled or crafted. In a way, I really like to make stuff and make it work for me and like be creative with it. I don't know if that's a hobby, but what is even a hobby, you know? How great is living in Norway? It's, it's great. Um, I have actually never seen the Northern Lights. I live in the south of Norway and I have never been to like the northern parts of Norway. Uh, we do have a really like narrow and long country. So for me to travel to say the North Cape is about the same as traveling to Rome in distance. Um, but I would like to travel the whole of Norway someday. I really like the Norwegian nature and especially the mountain scenery. There is just something about looking at mountains that really relaxes me. They're just so kind of still and permanent. <laughs> I really like that. So um, these are my top five things about Norway. Our tap water, our healthcare system, the mountains, scum and uh, Edvard Kring in that order. As for fun facts, I don't know if I have any facts that are that fun. Um, but I recently read that there are actually more people of Norwegian descent living in the US than actual people living in Norway and I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, we are only a bit over 5 million people so we're not that many actually. Traveling is not something that I prioritize economically right now. I would rather spend my money on going to festivals and concerts and buying vinyl. Uh, but I have been to quite a few countries in Europe. My family used to take these like Europe road trips when I was younger. And I also went on Intrail when I was 18. That's like the backpacking through Europe thing that people talk about in movies. So I have been to, if I'm looking at the map, um, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Germany, France, Austria, Hungary, Poland, England, Ireland, Portugal. And uh, I have also been to Russia and China, actually. Um, as for my favorite place, I guess I would have to say Berlin or Amsterdam. And I also really want to go to Iceland. I think that's maybe the next place on the list right now. I like this question. All of my lipsticks are MAC or Bella Pierre. 
I really like the matte formula of MAC lipsticks. That's what I'm wearing now in the color Diva. I think that's my favorite, maybe. And um, I also like the mineral lipsticks from Bella Pierre. They're really smooth and they smell like chocolate. I believe yes, anything is possible. And that is all of the questions, yay! So I hope this was semi-entertaining or that you learned something about me that you didn't know. I have actually also been asked about like the equipment that I use for filming and recording and editing, but I'm going to make a separate video about that, so I'm going to film that right now. I thought that deserved its own video thing. Um, so stay tuned for that and uh, comment below if there is anything else and, uh, and tell me your top 10 favorite bands. That would be great. I would really like to know. And um, I guess that's it. I hope you're having a really nice day and um, I will see you soon. Bye!